Don't forget to stay tuned at the end of the credits for the after party. You're all invited. The Rookie. 19 Nocturne Boulevard. Nocturne Boulevard? Not far. When you hit Howard, hang a right. Howard meets Philip at a weird kind of angle. Then you cross James and Paul. You can't miss Nocturne. It's just past the Ottoman. 19 Nocturne Boulevard. Your address for suspenseful stories of the speculative, strange, and supernatural. Tonight's story is The Rookie. Warning. This episode contains scenes of extreme violence. Please listen responsibly. Yes? This is 19 Nocturne Boulevard. Won't you step inside? Did you have any trouble finding it? What do you mean, what kind of a place is it? Why, it's a residential corridor, deep in the bowels of an industrial apartment complex, somewhere in a very dark and possibly very near future. Like that. You kids these days, you should have seen the way we used to raise hell. Please don't break an old woman's heart by saying you never heard of Il Hefa. The mad cow? In the flesh. Wow! I used to have your trading card. Oh, you're gonna make me cry. When you're done there, wipe off a bit so you don't trip on the linoleum and join me for some lemonade. This is Mandy with the Biz Buzz. And today's big score, the Vestal claims nine victims in Theta Block all in one night and without even breaking a nail. Bob caught up with her after her impressive killing lineup. How are you going to top this? I have a few ideas. You all better watch out. You know what Vestal means. Don't touch. I hope it's not too tart for you. The sugar was short this week. Again. I'll tell you, never grow old. They treat us like animals. And who can complain? You get your weekly food ration, your ever-present television, and all they want is your very heart and soul. Huh? But back in the day, you were one of the best. Oh, you flatterer, you. Ah, those were the days. Tell me, do you remember my signature? Who wouldn't? You'd hamstring young men and then stomp them to death. (laughs) Oh, you do remember. Here, have a cookie. Thanks. Speaking of signatures, do you have one yet? And a name. Oh, that's absolutely vital. Did you just start, or is this just your first time down in this block? Um, well, uh, uh, let's see. Um, this is my second kill, and, uh, I don't have a name yet. I guess I... I thought the press usually gives you one. Oh, you don't want to leave it to those bastards. Take Mr. Bantam. That was dreadful. Just because he used the lead rooster on the end of his walking cane. 30 years later and people are still calling him Peckerhead. Ooh, yeah. Hmm. I just don't know yet. When you think of one, leave it scrawled in blood on the wall over a victim. Oh, and make sure to spell it very carefully. Poor Slapshot suffered terribly for his 
thin O's. <laughs> the press just eat it up, and it makes a great desktop for your face file. Face file? <laughs> We all keep face files, hon. I'll show you mine sometime. This right now, though, is about you. You post it? Absolutely. I'll get you in touch with the right servers. <laughs> oh, I should ask before you break my heart. You're not one of those money-hungry bastards just in it for a payday, are you? Well, no. Good. To be really big, you can't think about that sort of thing. If you truly believe in what you're doing, truly love your work. The fame and money will come, though they're really kind of a curse. Look at poor Doctor Tolis. He can't make a move in full gear anymore without people throwing themselves in his way, begging to be slaughtered. <laughs> oh, oh! Do you have a victimology? I, I was just thinking because the poor doc keeps getting volunteers that aren't anything like his type. He tries, but well, I. Not really yet. I, I figured I, I, I just hunt around for a bit, and see what you know catches me. Tonight was a pretty girl. Last night was a teenage jock. <laughs> he thought he could take me. That was kind of cool for my first. A bit of a fight. Really let me know that this, this is what I'm made for. Oh, oh! You are such a darling. <laughs> Chips are chucky. Here he comes walking down the street. Chips are chucky. He's the one that no one wants to beat. But I like my knife. I'm comfortable with it. It's a lovely knife, dear, but it's really not much of a signature. I told you I would hook you up, Calvin. All right. Just a minute. Calvin is the best. He has handcrafted more specialty weapons for our kind of folks than any other craftsman in the field. Like Mr. Bantam's? Yes. And Chainsaw Chucky? I think he just pimped that one. And what can I do for? Bella, oh, carissimo, come here and give me some sugar. Oh, mm. you old softy, you. Mm -mm. Now this is Lucas. He's got a real flair for the trade, but he's just starting out, and he needs a hook. A hook? Why, I ain't made a hook in years. Well, not actually a hook, hook, I unless you. Uh... Uh, I, I don't know. Hooks, well, it's an. Entirely different fighting style. I'd I'd have to try it out first. We'll keep it in mind. What's top of the line these days, Kelvin? Oh, everybody wants something big and flashy these days. Hand them something without a motor in it, and they turn up their nose. Even then, they want spikes and chrome and yeah. Have a knife. Show me. Not bad. Not bad. Good balance. I can see why Bella brought you to me, though. It's not that there's anything wrong with your knife, dear. It was was my dad's. That's so sweet. Are, are you good with your left hand? We can always add you a weapon. You can use your knife to take the prey down, and finish them off with something like a hook. In other news, Louie Louie, a notorious serial known for strangling his victims with a microphone cord, has finally been apprehended. Mr. Louie, what do you have to say about your capture? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Well, I wanted a glorious end and a hail of bullets, but, but public execution, that's like my second choice. Anything but retirement, baby. Yeah! In his over 15-year run, Louie laid claim to over 800 victims. He leaves behind a wife and three dogs. So, did you have a good day today? Ugh, had to work. 
It really cuts into the time for this. I know. But that's the balance you gotta strike. At least until you start getting the residuals and the franchise offers. You don't think of that as selling out? The action figures and the, the guest appearances and the cartoon shows? And the trading cards, don't forget. <laughs> No. Once that money starts coming in, it frees you up from the daily grind. Even the ones who make a big deal out of their disdain for mere capitalism never turn down an honest buck. I guess. If everyone does it. And here? This may be just what you need. What? Chainsaw Chucky is retiring? And taking his whole franchise with him. There's going to be a lo lot of gaping media holes to fill in once he goes. But how can I? You have to make a big splash, hun, and fast. Once Chucky goes, it's going to be a feeding frenzy, and everybody's going to be trying to make their bones as fast and as hard as possible. But there's no room for... Finesse. You'll always have time for finesse later. With the imminent retirement and complete retreat of famed serial celebrity Chainsaw Chucky, serials are creeping out of every corner of the work competing in a balls-to-the-wall showdown to see who can fill the Checkmeister's considerable shoes. To all citizens not willing to take a chance on becoming a notch in someone's tool belt, we caution you to strictly observe the standard survival rules. Remain in your homes as much as possible, as cereals are not allowed to break indoors. Whatever you, you do, though, don't answer a knock. That makes you fair game. Even if it means no help for a victim on the run. If you do have to travel, stay in large crowds. There may be cereals even there, but most prey on lone targets. And couples. More at the top of the hour. But now, kittens. Oh, oh my, you look exhausted. Come in, come in. It didn't go well. People are... They're either hiding or... There's just too many of us out there. The only idiots venturing out of their homes and into the corridors are large groups who get drunk and decide to try to take us down. Go figure! It's not too surprising. This sort of competition brings out the worst in everyone. Here, have a sweater. Doesn't help that there's a new show counting down the cereals who've been bagged each week. Vultures. Sweater? Cutbacks. All the elderly housing units have dropped a couple of degrees. Don't worry about it. You were saying... <sighs> Every half-assed bozo with a gun fancies it's open season. They're just jealous that they don't have what it takes to do what we do. <sighs> I'm done. No! Don't give up! You love this work! I'm not giving up, but I... I think I'll just lay low until this blows over and then pick up again. Besides... I won't get enough media attention in the next week to be picked up by Chucky's sponsors anyway. Hmm. Do you trust me? Of course. If I set you on a path, will you play it out? I bet you, I bet you, that I can get you into the public eye, quick and hard. I don't guarantee Chucky's spot, but I know we can parlay you into something. How? Oh. Drink your tea. And the death toll rises as Hermit Henry, the Yellow Paint Vandal, and the Crimson Lumberjack join the ranks of those who have lost their lives in this crucial time. Gary? It's easy to see where popular opinion is taking this June. The list of deceased serials far outstrips the list of those taken into custody. Do you think it's a sign of the times? Are citizens finally tired of being hunted in the very hallways they live in? I don't know, Gary. The sales of serial merchandise continue to go through the roof, so I can't imagine that people have grown tired of the violent pop icons. 
Maybe it's just that we've reached critical mass, and it's time to weed out the unworthy. You bet. At the sight of this latest atrocity, we have a neighbor to comment. Sir? At least he doesn't have to deal with rationing anymore. Whatever do you mean? I get the quick hard death. Not a bad thing. They, they kept cutting her meds. Look, you made the papers. It's really a good thing you came up with your own name. They would have dubbed you Avon Calling or something. But here it is in black and white. Doorbell Mike strikes again. Third elderly woman found dead in corridor outside her home. I'm so proud of you. It's good. But I don't know if it's gonna... Trust me. Wasn't I the one who suggested the elderly? No one preys on us in the hallways. We're too slow. No challenge. But getting us out of our homes. That is something everyone can sink their teeth into. And it proves people can still be shocked, and that's nice. And you remember to always drag the victim into the hall for the final strokes. That's where the cameras are, like you said. Good boy. I have another address for you. Is this it? It? Well, I mean, it's only a couple more days, and... I made the bottom part of page one, but the Vestal is right up at the top again. She's one tough bitch. Language! Now, don't be down on that girl. She's working very hard to establish herself just like you are. It's much better to respect your competitors. Then you don't underestimate them. All right. <laughs> you sound like my mom. Heaven forbid. Are you going to finish that? In a surprise upset, Doorbell Mike, a relative newcomer to the serial roster, has taken quite a lead over many of his more established compatriots. He has racked up an impressive death toll of 11 in just the last four days. That shows some drive, eh, Bob? Yes, Fred. I think Doorbell Mike will be giving even the Vestal a run for the money. Well, the Ice Princess herself is still out in front, and I don't see how anyone, even someone as ambitious as our friend Mike there, is ever going to beat her popularity rating. Doesn't hurt that she's so darned pretty. Don't let her hear you say that, Bob. The Vestal doesn't take kindly to compliments. Whoa, whoa, she knows I don't mean anything by it, don't you, hon? If you're out there listening, Vestal sweetheart, why don't you give us a call and I'll I'll be happy to apologize. I should kill that newscaster guy. Huh? Why? He was... I don't know, making fun of the Vestal. She's probably going to go after him. So I was thinking if I could take him out first. Say it was for her, like I was defending her honor. That's lovely. You're really getting the hang of it, aren't you? I wonder where he lives. Doesn't matter. We know where he works. Thanks, Sod. See you in the morning. Sure thing, Mr. Jones. Huh? Hmm. Oh well. Ah! Ding dong. Oh shit. Strange events in what has been dubbed the Serial Olympics 
Bob Jones, presenter for this very channel, has been brutally murdered in our own parking garage. The words for the Vestal were written in his own blood in letters a foot high on the car he was found in. Dead. No one's quite sure who's responsible for this, Mandy. It's baffling everyone. Yes, without leaving a clear signature, the killer may have done himself out of a particularly stunning score. Forensic specialists are even now analyzing the killing technique, trying to establish provenance. It's probably not going to be conclusive until early next week, though. Too bad. I can't believe I forgot to sign my name! Oh, my poor boy. At least no one else is getting the credit either. And it's definitely not the Vestal's modus. She wouldn't take the credit anyway. Probably not. The girl's got standards, I'll give her that. So, now you're defending her? I... I, I was looking over her face file. She's very impressive. You like her, you big softy. <laughs> uh, uh, she's way out of my league. Five more dead serials have joined the Toe Tag Brigade. Confirmed are the Armadillo, the Striper, and the Glove Collector. The others are awaiting identification. And another relative newcomer has sprinted to the top of the charts. He calls himself Retributo and is targeting the very serials he's aspiring to join. His signature is an arrow of safety orange paint pointed to the head of his victims as seen here in the death scene of the Glove Collector. Retributo is probably the reason the civilian death toll has slowed so dramatically in the last 24 hours. Are you going out? Have to. Be careful. Take some protection. Of course. Here's an address. Thanks. In case anything happens... It won't. Well, you're great. You're making a mad old cow very happy. Go, and, and, and if the lights are out when you get back, don't be too surprised. The electricity is being turned off for a couple hours each night. More cutbacks. How can they do that? Don't you worry about it. You go and be careful. Hey, anyone here? Come to me. Oh, damn. Oh, come on, get it. Get, get him, get him, get him. Get, oh, shit. Lunk? Man, dead, dude. Look at his neck. That looks like... The Vestal. He's so cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh shit. Only two more? Oh. Men. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. Come to me, you little thug. What a fuck. Oh, man. Stay. Bear witness. You are perfectly safe. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Ha! Missed. Shit! You, my dear lady, are quite a feather for my. Your leg? Tonight's top story, the first of several brand new elder care centers has just opened, ready to take the first 120 volunteer occupants. Gee, that sounds great, doesn't it? Total care, regulated nutrition, round-the-clock observation. In case of those pesky accidents. Not to mention the long-term savings on the taxpayers' hard-earned money. And nothing gives you a sense of community faster than sharing a room again, eh, Fred? Just like boarding school. If this unit is successful, pundits project that everyone over the age of 60 will be well cared for by the end of the decade. She seems to be doing all right, but she shouldn't put any weight on that knee for a while. It was this retribution guy? I think so. 
<laughs> I left him a real mess. <laughs> Did you remember to put your name on it this time? Um, no. What? I put... I put her name on it. What? It was her kill. Maybe the civilians, but not the guy. It doesn't matter. She'll make a better show anyway. Not for a couple of weeks on that knee. Look at me. What? I know what you're thinking, and it's very sweet, being the white knight and everything. But she's good enough that I'm sure she'd rather fight her own battles. But... And take credit for her own kills. Ah, uh, you... You talking about me? You need to be resting. Y yeah, kinda. Who the hell are you anyway? Um, L Lucas. <sighs> He's Doorbell Mike, and he saved you so you could be a little grateful. <gasps> In a strange series of events, credit for a massacre in Quadrant Gamma, level 37 is still in dispute. Over to you, Fred. As you can see behind me, Mandy, four deaths in this otherwise normal residential corridor have stirred all sorts of debate. The signature on the crime is clearly that of the Vestal, but she has this to say about it. I was there. Killed two of the gangster wannabes. Don't know what happened after that. Someone is forging my signature, and I refuse to hunt again until that person admits it. So if you're a fan of the Vestal who faked this scene to give her credit, you better step forward, or she's not coming out again anytime soon. That's really clever. Hmm. Save space, not being able to get around on that knee for a while. I wish she'd stayed with you a little longer. I wish you'd get over her. She's got her own life to live. She can't spend her time on you. Yeah, but... Get through the next couple of days. Once this is over, you can look her up again. And who knows? I don't know where I... Don't worry. I copied her number from her calm while she was out cold. But it's yours when this is over. Just a couple more days. She's not going to want to hear from you right now anyway. Poor girl's going to still be smarting for a while. Yeah. Now here's another address for you. You've really been great about all this. I see a lot of myself in you. And in the Vestal, too. You both have that fire in the belly. I'm starting to feel like this is... cheating, though. What? Getting these from you. There's nothing wrong with willing victims. It's kind of... Too easy. Worry about being challenged once you get established. Yeah. And in a stunning upset, it has been proven with DNA evidence that the dead body found this morning was, in reality, Retributo. So long, Masked Avenger. Credit for his death is still in the balance as the Vestal denies any hand in it and stays in seclusion while the debate rages. I have heard, Gary, that some of the signs of the body make it pretty clear that the killer of Retributo is likely to be the same one who took down newscaster Bob Jones a day and a half ago. While many step forward to claim the kill of the newsman, none yet have been able to give enough details to verify the score. It's a mystery, Gary. Tonight is the Piesi de Resistance. Your big night. Are you sure this will be the big one? Oh, yeah. You go handle these, and when you come back, we'll get you set up for one big last score. They'll never be able to ignore you after tonight. Right. Uh, thanks. Lucas? Yeah? You don't know what it means to all of us forgotten folk to be in the public eye again. Forgotten? All us old folks. You think I've just been helping you, but there's a lot of us too tired to live and too tired to die. Going out with a bang now. <laughs> You're not that old. <laughs> yes, sweet. And it gets us seen, noticed. No one can ignore what they're doing to us while we're being slaughtered by someone famous like you. Doing? Shortages, outages, group homes. Oh, just take something else away from the old folks. They won't notice. Nobody will care. Bella. I know. You care. You're such a good boy. Go on now. Have fun.
An anonymous note delivered to the station claims credit for the as yet unsolved deaths of Newsman Jones and the vigilante serial Retributo. It says in the strongest possible language that these deaths were the work of, strangely enough, Doorbell Mike. Strangely, you say? Is that because his target group mostly includes the elderly? Apparently he's decided to diversify. It's possible, but opening up a new target group is a tough job for any serial. Perhaps these new killings were self-defense? Well, the jury's still out on the motivations and machinations of the enigmatical Doorbell Mike. But he is still a front-runner, the dark horse, so to speak, for the exalted position of Chainsaw Chucky. Best of luck, Mike. Bella? In here. You shouldn't leave your door open like that. Anyone could just... walk in. What's all this? My scrapbook, silly. And there's my face file playing on the monitor. Thinking of getting back into the game? Sort of. You saw all four of them? Yep. Nice and gruesome. Like you said. Have you checked the ratings? It's still neck and neck between you and the Vestal. Funny how some people can get more attention by refusing to come out and play. Uh, it's cool. I don't mind if she wins. She won't. How can you be sure? The decision will be made tomorrow. The whole shebang. You know you've already got offers coming in from the small fry. Really? Why do you think I asked you to leave your calm here with me? Hmm? I didn't want you getting distracted tonight of all nights. But what offers? Comic books, action figures, small potatoes. They're all hoping you'll sign on with them, make it big, and they can ride you into prime time. But if I wait and I don't win, You then... will make it. Here, it's your last kill. But this is your dress here. Uh-huh. But Shh. That's why I got out all my old snaps. One last kill. The big one. The mad cow herself. To catapult you over the finish line. But I don't want to kill you. And why not? I'm just as good as anyone. But I, I, I like you. You're my friend. And do this for me, Lucas. I can't stand living like this any more than any of the other seniors you've taken out. This is not a life... At least give me a death that will mean something. Do I, do I have to, 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 to do it now? I was thinking midnight. Nice round number. I made sure to have some neighbors coming by shortly after to find the body as quickly as possible. Now, you make absolutely sure and sign me. I don't want this one going unrecorded. I will. You're such a good boy. Come here. I've... I've packed a bag for you. It's right next to the front door. Some things to remember me by and a, and a new list of names for, for later. It's amazing how word gets around. You're not gonna forget us old folks when you're a big star, are you? I promise. I won't. And you look up that nice Vestal if she'll let you. I, I think the Ice Princess thing is all an act. Maybe you could team up. Take out a lodge meeting or something. Really burn up the town. I'll ask her. Good. I, I made sure her number's in the bag, too. That's about five minutes fast. Don't go getting all soft on me and not making it quick. Kill shot. Take me out. Then mess up the place real good. Right. Make sure the books and the, and the photos are still legible, though. You want them to know right away who you got here. I'll scroll Mad Cow across the monitor. And let us a foot high. Oh. oh, that would be nice. Where should we start? Over, over near the door, I think. Ding dong! That's, that's the bag right there. Don't forget that. Right. And don't forget your signature. All right? <laughs> Oh 
and the hands-down favorite for taking the exalted place of the retiring chainsaw, Chucky. After a stunning coup this morning, when he took down an old woman who just happened to be a retired serial herself. Ill Heifer, the mad cow. Is Doorbell Mike. Congratulations, Mike, wherever you are. We have a word from the Vestal for her esteemed competitor. Doorbell Mike, it's been a good hard run. You deserve this for all you've done. And I have a soft, dark spot in my heart for someone with the class to kill someone in my name. Maybe we'll meet some night in the dark. Don't turn your back. We have a recording from the killer calling herself Il Heifer. Nothing will ever slow me down. I'm not going to stop as long as there's one man standing that needs killing. I got the whole world right in my hands. Yeah. Bella told me to call. Now that you know how to find us, don't be a stranger. We have enough of those already. Tonight's episode, The Rookie, was written by Julie Hoverson and is dedicated with a wink and a nod to Slay Industries of Nightfall Games. In it, Lucas, or Doorbell Mike, was Michael Fagenbloom. Bella, the Mad Cow, was Julie Hoverson. The Vestal was Megan Lane. Kelvin was Kim Turner. Louis was Renaud LaBeouf. Retributo was Jerry Bennett. For the press, Mandy was Melissa Pang. Bob was J. Spider Isaacson. Fred was Jeff Pittman. June was Kate Waterus. And Gary was Jeff Taylor. Other voices and victims included Agatha, Marge Lutton, Bernard, Pat McNally, the old guy on the phone and the security guard, played by Glenn Hallstrom, the dudes, which were Renaud LaBeouf, Cole Hornaday, and George Dunn, and the girl in the opening scene, played by Tanya Milevic of Lightning Bolt Theater of the Mind at www.lightningboltheaterofthemind.net. Music for this episode was by Pyrgent Lobogris, whose music is available on Gemendo. There's a link on our links page and is used under a Creative Commons license. The 19 Nocturne Boulevard theme song and the Chainsaw Chucky music were by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. The cover art is by Brett Coolstock. Sound effects were found on Soundsnap.com and Sonomic.com. Sound and mastering was done by Julie Hoverson. The opening credits featured Cole Hornaday, Renaud LaBeouf, and Julie Hoverson. All persons, places, and events in this story were fictitious, or used in a fictitious manner, and are not meant to reflect any persons, places, or things, living, dead, or undead. Questions? Comments? We would love to hear from you. Contact us at 19nocturne at live.com, or check out our website at www.19nocturneboulevard.com. That's 19nocturne. Or join us in the 19 Nocturne Boulevard Forum over at www.audiodramatalk.com. This presentation is copyright 2009 to Julie Hoverson and Reality Productions.